insight number five. So we're covering off tithing in this one because 119 and 120 are about tithing. Uh, 120 is really short. That's another one that's just one verse. See, I was wrong. I said at the beginning that only one was one verse. So two of the sections this week are only one verse. Um, so although it seems like you've got to read five sections, a lot of reading, not so bad. Um, all right, so section 119 is, up until this point, people were giving of their excess. They tried living the law of consecration. hadn't really worked that well. A lot of poor people. Um, so they're sort of trying to get something, or the Lord's thinking, okay, my people are ready to have something more in place. So he introduces, officially, tithing, like used to be tithes. But tithing more for purpose, because... You know, like they used to you think of the widow's might time in, in Jesus in the temple. The people would just bring money in and it would just go in and nobody would know what happened to it. But you made an offering to the Lord and that, and that was accepted. Um, this needed to run a little differently. Because we're in a world now that has governments and taxes and, and just you can't just give and, you know, we, we keep a record of it. Most of us now, today, um, you know, don't even see cash. We just work with online internet banking and see numbers getting transferred around. Um, we can pay our tithing online, which is a freaking awesome. Thank you for that. Um, that's, a, that's a definite bonus. Because how many times have we used to forget to write the check or take it to church, you know? So being able to pay it online, the moment the money goes into our bank for getting paid, we can transfer it out again and pay tithing online. And I think that's amazing. Um, I don't think that when they wrote this that they would ever imagine something like that would exist. So it's a pretty cool. Anyway, so this is on tithing. Um, and Joseph Smith, it says in the, the chapter heading here that this revelation is given July 1838. Answer to a supplication, O Lord, show unto thy servants how much thou requirest of the properties of thy people for a tithing. So the law of tithing today had not been given to the church previous to the revelation. The term tithing in the prayer just quoted and in previous revelations had meant not just one tenth but all free will offerings or contributions to the church funds. And it goes on to talk a bit about that. So this is, you know, how it was going to be and how they are. So we're looking at 1 to 3 and then we're going to read 20. So bear with, right. So 1 to 3. Verily thus saith the Lord, I require all their surplus property to be put into the hands of the bishop for my church in Zion. So that still exists today, because if you have surplus that you do not need, do we not share it? I know I do. I know I've got a group of sisters in our ward that certainly do that. We have surplus. We're like, oh, before we give this away to anyone else, any of you guys want, right? Like, we're always giving away surplus. Like, you know, oh, the lemon trees and thing. Who wants lemons? Or the Fijoas are going. Who wants Fijoas? Or um, I've got a ton of silver bait. Anybody wants silver bait? There's a sharing tree community in Hamilton that exists here of over 400 members that just share, oh, we have this, do you want it? Um, so that does exist, and it's just been taken over. Um, so Mandy, who started that, thank you, girl, and she's moving on. Um, but the lady that's taken over is really cool too, so that will keep going. And, you know, because our bishop doesn't really want a whole lot of extra stuff in his garage, but we're constantly swapping back and forth. Um, and it's a really beautiful way to do that. Okay, let's continue on in verse 2. For the building of mine house, and for the laying of the foundation of Zion, and for the priesthood, and for the debts of the presidency of my church. And this shall be the beginning of the tithing of my people. Right? The beginning of it. This is how you have that everybody pays their little bit, and suddenly there's no debt anymore. And it's a beautiful principle. It's like when you need to raise money for something... And you're like, if everyone just gave a dollar, we'd have enough. So this is the principle. And it, the sound, it is, is old as time. And it works. Um, section 120 says, Verily I saith the Lord, the time is now come that it shall be disposed of by a council, composed of the first presidency of my church, and of the bishop and his council, and by my high council, and by mine own voice unto them, saith the Lord, even so. Amen. So, being that they had at this point two bishops, and they keep moving around, the first presidency pretty much decided what was going to happen to tithing money. Now, in today's world, there's a lot more and a lot more members. So, your local bishop will decide, out of his budget, because they work with budgets, um, what that tithing money is going to be used for. The state gets it. Um, if you've been a president of an auxiliary, you get a budget to work with. That is tithing money. What are you going to do with it? Um, so yeah, those are the sections on tithing. Now, it's really important for me 
because I love tithing too. This is this is huge for me. Tithing has definitely blessed my life. And I wanted to ask you guys how the principle of tithing's blessed your life. Uh, do you have a testimony of tithing yet? I certainly do. Um, I didn't used to. I was sort of like, well, I pay it because you know I want to be close to Christ, blah blah. You know, blessings come, yeah, whatever. Um, but I didn't quite get the deeper meaning to it. Um, yeah. So, have you got that yet? Are you working on that? But um, first of all, interest here means income that has been determined um, by our profits generation after generation. That interest means income. Um, and part of providing that way for you is being willing, oh, part of providing the way for you, um, that the Lord provides a way. So part of that providing a way is being willing to and following through with the Lord's command. This includes tithing. So I've been so continually blessed and continue to be by a meticulous tithe payer, by being a meticulous tithe payer. I, the minute it, 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 and I check it, and if it doesn't equate up, I'm like panicking, and it is, you know, I will hunt it down and search it out. Yeah, that's me. Because I just, I know how important it is to my life. Pay tithing. The Lord takes care of your needs. It is a simple command, a simple principle, one you do not want to neglect. Um, so I also think of tithing, and you've probably heard this, and to some people it can just be like, you know, wow, wow, wow. But it is so true that the Lord gives you everything that you have, and he's just asking for 10% of it back. It's not really giving up and it's not the same as other donations once you've paid it it is up to the lord through his leaders to buy stuff and to pay for whatever needs paying for and if you don't like what they're doing with it that's no longer your problem because you gave that up willingly as a you know thank you for everything else for the other 90 percent that you get to keep you're giving up the 10% back to say thank you for everything. He's only asking for 10. Um, and, you know, if they get it wrong, if the leaders get it wrong and what they spend, that's on their heads, not on yours. Don't worry about it. The Lord provides for you, so don't worry about it. You don't agree with it? Don't even, don't even look at what they're spending it on. Just leave it. It's fine. You're fine. They're fine. Just leave it. Um, you know, some people can get really thing about that. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, Gordon B. Hinckley, though, he said, The law of tithing is a law designed to bless us. It does not take from us. Great are the promises of the Lord to those who live honestly with him in their tithes and offerings. See, great are the promises of the Lord. But it does not take from us. We think it's something that we're giving up. And we're not. I've had people say, Oh, I could do so much with that extra 10%. I'm like, No, you really couldn't. Because giving up that 10%, I get so much more than I could have ever got with that 10%, because I willingly give it up, I don't even think about it anymore, it is not even a question to me, it is not even a thing, and I recently inherited from my grandma a lot, paid tithing, I've had other big payouts, tax refunds, um, accident compensation, and there's, without question, tithing is the first thing that comes off the top, and it's a lot, um, and yet, I don't question it. When my dad's inheritance comes through, tithing will be paid. That is my income, and I will pay tithing on it. Because the blessings from that far outweigh, far outweigh anything that I could have done with that money. Yeah, something to think about for your weekend. But that's it. So, that's for those five sections. I haven't even looked at next week's reading yet, because I've just been like, oh my gosh, it's getting close to Christmas, and I've got so much to do. So, and we're already way over time. So, enjoy your week. So glad you joined us here. I love you guys and be safe. Keep strong. Kia ha. Kia kaha. I'll see you soon. Bye.